当年是出于一个什么样的情况发放给李登辉签证的？ Uh, and he said, "I'm president of the United States. I'm not president of China. I'm going to allow this to happen because it's the right thing to do." 美中关系和六四之后相比又如何呢？ And there's a lot of ideological anger. This has sort of scraped away the old healing scab on the wounds that go back to 1989. 大家好，这里是观点，我是唐奇薇。今天观点节目的嘉宾还是前美国国安会亚太事务主任苏宝利先生。1995年，克林顿政府决定给时任台湾总统李登辉发放签证，苏先生是在场的决策智囊之一。当年的台海危机给美中关系带来了哪些长远的影响？从八九民运到今天的后疫情时代，美中关系又经历了哪些起起落落？一起来听一听苏宝利先生的观点。您在老布什以及克林顿执政时担任过重要的外交官员。当年美国的对华政策最主要的核心是什么呢 ？The core U.S. policy during the Bush administration was concern about the Soviet Union. Since、so、in 1989, the Soviet Union was tottering, but there was still a sense amongst the Bush、uh, leadership that there needed to be a definable triangular relationship in which the U.S.-China relationship was more important than the China-Russia, their China-Soviet Union relationship. So there was still this kind of balancing act that was going on. Kissinger was was still influential and so forth,、uh, and and President Bush. Was very concerned about making sure that what happened at Tiananmen did not permanently damage what he considered to be a fairly good and productive U.S.-PRC relationship, and that may have, in some ways, cost him the election because a lot of the American public no longer saw China as the good guys, or the People's Republic of China as the good guys. During the Clinton administration, at the beginning. Uh, there was a lot of very hostile rhetoric directed at the PRC,、um, and it was grounded in the Clinton administration's uh, more uh, human rights-based approach. So、uh, it it started off as a a, a much more、uh, antagonistic relationship, and only over time, as economic、um, Relations improved as as there was more、uh, positive interaction、uh, between academics、uh, and others. It was just a, a kind of a gradual process of improvement that took place. I'm not sure whether that's going to get repeated、uh, in in 2021 or not. I'm not optimistic about it. 台湾是美中关系最重要的议题之一。我们来谈一下一九九五年。一九九五年，美国政府给台湾总统李登辉发签证的时候，啊、呃，您是在场的决策者之一。您能不能跟我们谈一下，当年是出于一个什么样的情况发放给李登辉签证的吗？当时中国政府又是一个什么样的反应呢 ？Let me harken back to. Our earlier discussion about the differences between the Clinton and the Bush administration.、Um, President Clinton was much more attuned to congressional opinion、uh, than President Bush was. In fact, when on, on the China issue,、uh, both of them had differences with the Congress, but Clinton at least started out being in the same、uh, general area. He was getting a lot of pressure from Congress to allow President Lee to visit his alma mater. And the only, the only reasons that were provided、um, for why he should not grant President Lee a visa had to do with, well, Beijing will be angry and they'll create trouble.、Uh, and President Clinton basically looked at the Congress and he saw it passing resolutions in favor of him allowing President Lee to visit his alma mater, passing by overwhelming majorities.、Uh, and he said. I'm president of the United States. I'm not president of China.、Uh, I'm I'm going to allow this to happen because it's the right thing to do, and that was his opinion of it. And、uh, my colleague and I,、uh, on the National Security Council,、uh, and and one of the senior members of the National Security Council,、uh, said, 
we'd like you to give us a little bit more time to prepare the ground for this, to get to talk to the PRC, to explain what's going on, and to, and to maybe get them to be not quite as angry as they are right now. Uh, but that didn't happen. And so uh, China, the PRC, had to, had to kind of follow through on its tantrum. And, um, and, and the results were not good. Uh, they increased the levels of military tension by launching missiles into the strait. Um, they, they tried to um, pressure the Taiwan election of 1996, uh, and the United States reacted with a small show of force. That didn't help anything. Who knows what they would have done otherwise, but uh, it put Beijing on notice that the United States was not going to roll over and play dead if the PRC was going to try to put military pressure uh, on Taiwan. And that attitude has persisted I think through several administrations since that time. There has been a desire to not make it any worse, uh, but because Taiwan has been um, a longtime friend uh, and collaborator and a strong economic partner of the United States and has been under this consistent psychological and military and uh, other kinds of pressure from uh, the PRC, the United States has said we have to hold the course here. You know, the that time the Taiwan crisis had a long-term impact on the Taiwan relationship for the Well, I think it, I think it, uh, it shattered a lot of illusions. Um, I think there, there has been, uh, over the course of the last few years, um, a lot more hard-headed thinking in the United States about, uh, about whether or not relations between the Communist Party-led People's Republic of China and the United States can really get better on a, on a smooth upward track. Uh, I think a lot of people have decided that with the, ideolo with the ideology of the, of the Chinese Communist Party, with the political structure that, uh, that requires uh, this tough-minded wolf warrior diplomacy uh, that, that the PRC has demonstrated. Um, there's a limit to how far we can progress. Uh, and, and I think that the Biden administration has come to the conclusion that, uh, that, the, that the ideas that we once had about uh, an overall improvement of relations and a smoother U.S.-PRC relationship, I think they've decided that that probably isn't going to happen, not as long as the, as the Communist Party of China is in power. So they're prepared, they're, they're prepared to, and they are implementing policies that resemble some of the things that the Trump administration carried out, uh, but are different, significantly different. Uh, and, and the general purpose is to give the message to both our allies and our and our adversaries that um, we're prepared to compete. And if you want to play tough, we'll play tough. We will look after our own interests. We will improve our relations with our friends and allies. And in those areas where we don't like your international relations, we'll say so. 目前中国政府在军事外交政策上有多大程度是围绕台湾展开的呢? It's an issue on which nobody should plan for there to be any compromise on the, on the part of Beijing. Their, their basic position has been very solid for a long time. They, they, they gave as much as they were going to give in the 1992 consensus which is, wasn't a consensus then and certainly isn't now. Uh, but they have tried to relax the toughness of their policy, and it didn't gain them much. And so inside the PRC, I think, I don't know, but I think that there are, are people who are, there are differences of view, and there are people who would like to punish Taiwan militarily. Uh, and stand up to the United States, and you know there are there are voices within the PRC um, 
what are called in some cases the Mao left, um, that that also stand up and say, yeah, that's right, we should we should stand up to the United States. This kind of nationalism. Um, it's all very uh, tangent. It's all very naive. Um, but it's there. But my understanding of the PRC system is that they don't base their policies on public opinion. They base their policies on on their reading of international relations, the configuration of forces, and more importantly, they base their opinions on who within the leadership says what they should do uh, and what those relationships are like. 我们看到北约公报首次将中国列为是系统性威胁。在您看来，这对未来的国际地缘政治会产生什么样的影响呢 ？I can remember when I was in、uh, in the White House, many of my colleagues from outside the government were 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 saying a lot of things, and one of them was, "You don't have a strategy. You have no strategy. You need to have a strategy."、Uh, and We would make a, a statement that that、uh, was intended to sort of speak to that issue. So everybody has an idea about what the right statement should be to define a strategy that doesn't obligate you、uh, to too much. And I think the statement、uh, is kind of designed along those lines. They don't want to have an open break with the People's Republic of China. They they have a very active.、Uh, Economic and a very profitable economic relationship, particularly Germany and France, and they would like that to not get shaken up by、um, U.S. PRC relations. So、um, it looks as though they've made a decision, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. 两千零三年，您出版了。天安门事件后的美中关系，从您那本书到现在已经有快二十年过去了。您觉得在今天这个后疫情、后香港民主时代，美中关系和六四之后相比又如何呢 ？The basic issues, the fundamental、uh, problems that have come up, they were both incidents that blew up. Tiananmen was、uh, was an incident that blew up. Uh, it it just it it just happened. It you know it was it in many ways went out of control. COVID nineteen is still very controversial. There are still those who believe that it was a lab experiment gone wrong. And until the archives are opened、uh, and people can knows about in them and find out what was said and what and who did what, those doubts and concerns are going to continue to exist. The public reaction. I think in 1989 was much more、um, emotional.、Um, we saw it on television. We watched、uh, the ambulances carrying away bloody bodies. We saw people being arrested and beaten. We saw、uh, people, you know, running for their lives to try and not be shot. That has not been true in the post-COVID-19 era. There were things that went badly wrong.、Uh, there were mistakes that were made by the Communist Party leadership at various levels, and there's a lot of ideological anger. Sort of, this has sort of scraped away the old healing scab on the wounds that go back to 1989. So、um, I have low expectations、uh, that things are going to get better anytime soon. 美中关系错综复杂，苏先生告诉我，他不愿意就目前美国的对华政策最终是否会有成效进行预测。但是，正像他之前提到的，只要中共还在执政，美中关系要全面改善就没有可能。观众朋友，您的观点如何呢？非常欢迎大家留言并且转发分享我们的节目。我是唐奇威，感谢收看，再会。